Hey there, this is Heidi Hood with H2 Home Designs, where I share my innovative and artful designs that hopefully inspire you in your home. Today I'm here to show you a little bit of a trash to treasure. I found a kind of a fun piece that I think I might be able to remake into something that hopefully will be inspiring to you and might cause you to go out and do a little junk in yourself and kind of see what you can come up with. So I thought I would start out first of all by showing you a couple of pieces that I got. Um, there were a few in particular that I thought were kind of notable and um, so I thought I would share those with you today. So first I want to start with this one. I have a daughter who is getting married in about six months or so and as part of the spread for her wedding she is going to do tables that are just filled with amber bottles and florals and so anytime that I go out I'm always looking for an amber bottle and this is a beautiful amber bottle that I just picked up it says Paul Mason port so it's actually a liquor bottle but you can see that it's in the shape of a pretty heart it's got the original label, it's got the original cork on it, and it's just a beautiful piece. So I'm not sure that we'll be using it in the wedding. She's trying to avoid sort of liquor related uh, items at the wedding, but um, I think it's got great shape. And for a lot of the photo staging that I do, for the furniture pieces that I put together, this kind of thing is really nice to have. It adds character to the picture and kind of causes people to say, what is that? I mean, it really genuinely looks old and it's kind of interesting. So if you're out, you see amber, you do any kind of staging or you just want some little shelf setter pieces up behind your wall, this is a beautiful choice. And for a couple of bucks, I'm all over it. So there's that. I also picked up this piece. And this was, gosh, I don't remember. It was just a couple of bucks as well. To me, an absolute steal. And small tables right now and benches are really popular. Uh, people are using them in the front entryways. They're using them at the foot of a bed. This one could be used even for a plant stand or a little, um, just a little place to sit to put your shoes on. I'm not sure yet, but anytime I'm picking up something like this, I always check the stability of it. And this one is nice and stable. There's no wobble to it. Um, it probably needs another coat of paint. The paint that's on it is sort of a glossy black and it's not horrible, but I think I could add some more character to it. So I've got some fun ideas for this piece and perhaps I will end up showing you what I come up with. But anytime you're out and you see small tables like this or you see small benches, I'd say pick them up. If it's something that you can use in your own home or if you're interested in doing some of your own selling, uh, it's really popular right now. Bring them home. Uh, give them a little bit of paint, a little bit of character of some kind, and then you may be able to sell them or just use them in your own home. So this was a great find. Next, we're going to take a little trek back to Grandma's house or Great Grandma's house. This is the next piece that I found. You can see, looks like one I saw at my Grandma's house. Uh, it was probably an old magazine rack, and you can see sort of the, the spindly-ish um, design that it has. I'm not super fond of the dark color. This dark walnut color is too dark for my house. In fact, most of the woodwork in my house is almost this dark. So any accent pieces that I put in my house, I prefer to be much lighter than this. So I don't know if I'll keep this for my house. I might, but if I do, I will definitely be lightening it up. Um, I think it's something where you could put something on the side here and then use it for, it could be for magazines, although Magazines are kind of rare right now, aren't they? I mean, how many of us have magazines at home? Um, you know, most of the stuff that we do nowadays is online. It's all Pinterest, like Pinterest is a great big magazine. So I don't know how many of you collect magazines anymore, but it doesn't have to be a magazine holder. I think this would be nice in a bathroom if you want to use it to put towels in, something that you could use to put uh, perhaps toilet paper rolls in, or spring's coming, perhaps fill it with some small plants and set it out in your front porch. I think that would be just beautiful. So lots of ideas for this one and we'll see what I come up with. But this is the piece that I wanted to show you. This is the one that the video is all going to be about today. A little rocking horse. Isn't it cute? It rocks. A little bit of a rock. It's, eh, it's kind of wobbly but it rocks a little bit. But and he needs some help. First of all look at that neck. Is that not the scrawniest horse you've ever seen? I don't know. I debated on whether or not I should cut another piece of wood here to give him a little bit of a thicker neck, but 
I'm going to try and work with it just as it is because it looks like they probably used maybe a router around this piece originally just to kind of give it some shape and I don't really want to mess with my router right now so I'll probably stick with it but I'll come up with some way to give add some thickness or fullness to his neck. Um, also don't love again the dark wood this dark walnut stain that's on the bottom and I think the whole thing was probably stained this color to begin with because if you take a look at the horse I don't know if you can see that there are some bleed through spots here and so that's probably that dark stain and they put a water-based paint over the top of it and the stain is going to bleed through over time because it's got an oil base to it so it could use a little love so i'm going to take care of this rickety wobble that he has come up with perhaps a little bit of a different color scheme not too far off of what this is but maybe a little bit differently and then I wasn't sure if I should just leave it the way it is and just give it a facelift. So I took a little tour around my garage and I came up with something that was given to me. In fact, it was given to me by my dad. Uh, my dad is a junker, he's an artist, and anytime he finds things that he thinks I might be interested, he keeps them and he saves them for me. And I got to see him this last week and he said to me, Heidi, Heidi, come here. And he had this little bag in his hand and he opened up his sack and inside the sack were, these there's a bag full of spindly pieces like this and some small little pieces like this and I thought I might be able to take advantage of some of these pieces and use it on this project so this I think was probably a footboard just based on the size of these I have a feeling it was probably a footboard with a railing that kind of went across the bottom you can imagine if I put all these together um, that it would be perhaps a footboard so he used some parts of it he's always creating beautiful things at home and left me these which I think are just beautiful and I think are actually might be really nice in this project so those are my ideas this is the before and Let's get to work and see what we can do for a beautiful after. I took those two uh, spindle type pieces that came off the footboard of the bed and I went ahead, it was a little bit tricky, but I went ahead and took my jigsaw and I just cut off that piece that was attached, sort of that, that bracket uh, that held these two spindles together at one point in time. I went ahead and took my jigsaw and I just made a cut right along there it's not perfect, a little bit messy, but with a little bit of sandpaper, that's gonna look just fine. And then I also, so I kept the one spindle, essentially as is, and I cut a little bit off the top. And then the second spindle, I went ahead and I cut this piece off the bottom. And the reason that I did that is so that I can stack them like this. I have a nice base for the horse to sit on, and then I have a base at the bottom, okay? And I'm going to be gluing those together, but first of all, we need to deal with this little issue here. Uh, this is wood filler, and truth be told, it's been sitting in my garage. And we live in northern Wisconsin, so you can imagine it's a little bit firm right now. And so I'm going to do the best I can to work with this. I'm simply going to take the wood filler, and I'm going to fill the crack around my cut here. I may use a little more than necessary, but I'll tell you, it all can be sanded off, so that's not a problem. I'm going to let it dry completely, which this doesn't take very long to dry. And then I'm going to go back in with some sandpaper, and then sand off that excess wood filler, and at the same time, smooth out that cut that I made with my jigsaw. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. And while it's drying, let the creativity begin. I've got the horse, I took apart the base. Um, so that rocker that the horse sits on, I've taken apart and I'm gonna do a little bit of a technique on that. And this is the horse itself. And if you remember, I talked a little bit about some bleed through that you could see on the horse. And I am probably not going for that look. You could sort of just embrace this if you really liked it and use 
um, an antiquing wax or an antiquing glaze over the top of this white. It would cause all of this sort of bleed through just to blend in and would be just fine. But I didn't know for sure if that's the look that I wanted. So I went ahead and took the horse and I sprayed the whole thing with a spray shellac. To avoid additional bleed through of my new paint, I used a shellac base primer. It's great wood sealer and it dries in about 15 minutes. That shellac keeps or prevents that bleed through from bleeding through to the next coat of paint. Um, and I'm gonna use a lighter coat of paint again, and so I really didn't wanna have to deal with that issue. It may be that I decide to um, embrace a little bit of antiquing, but I wanna have the ability to make that decision later. So, I should be okay. Um, I've sprayed it, and it's dry, and it's ready to go. So I've chosen a paint. Um, this paint is actually a Dutch Boy that's called Chalky Finish. I've not used it before, but I enjoy the look of chalk paint. I like sort of that matte, sort of a, it's got a little bit of a feel or a soft hand to it. I enjoy that look. And so I thought I would go ahead and try that with this piece. I am just using this small brush. You can use any kind of brush. You can use a chip brush if you like, uh, but I kind of like the short handle of this one. Uh, it's just more comfortable in my hand. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this brush today. And I'm going to go ahead and start by just putting a little bit of paper towel underneath the horse's legs here. That just kind of protect things a little bit. And I'm just going to take my brush and dab it. You can see where it, they have created just a white line here. You shouldn't have to dip your brush in any deeper than that white line. So normally I wouldn't suggest sticking your brush into your paint can and using it straight out of the paint can. It's really best to go ahead and pour your paint into some other container. Uh, but I have this project and another project that I'm going to be doing fairly quickly together, so I'm not terribly worried um, about um, contaminating the paint, I think that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to take this brush, and you can see how beautifully it goes on. And the color is very close to what's already here, but it's a little bit lighter. It doesn't have that yellowing. And again, I may change my mind and I may decide that I want that yellowing later, but I prefer to just have that white base and sort of make that decision as I go. You can see it's a really pretty, fresh white. And I've been debating the color to make the base. I'm not sure. I am gonna go with something that's white, fresh, and more natural looking, I think. But man, it's kind of hard to make a decision. If you follow me, and I'd love to have you follow me on YouTube to be a subscriber on YouTube, it's just H2 Home Designs. Also on Facebook, you'll see I have kind of an eclectic mix of pieces that I like to do. I enjoy a, a whole bunch of different um, styles. And those that know me really well know that eclectic is probably a good way to describe me. But I can embrace farmhouse, um, and I can embrace a little bit of primitive depending on some of the colors that primitives are. Oh, I love Victorian, the Victorian look, not the Victorian floral, but the old Victorian home. I grew up in a community that was just full of old Victorian homes. I just love all the woodwork that you find in those homes. And so I tend to like to have that detail in my own world. And you can see just from the old doors that I have back here, but I like that look. It's a kind of a wainscoting look. So I can appreciate that as well. So I'm a little bit funky, I think, in my style. But because of that, I get to play with all kinds of different um, designs and styles in the work that I do. And I think my customers appreciate that. So you can see already the horse is looking much, much fresher with just this little coat of paint. And I, what I'll do is go ahead and give it two coats. I think that will be good. And once it dries, I am going to do a little bit of the distressing. But part of the beauty of using a chalk paint is that you can distress using a damp rag and that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm not a big fan of sand sanding and getting sand uh, the dust all over the house so the idea of being able to use just a damp rag 
and to work the edges here a little bit is perfect for me. So I'm gonna keep working on this. I will be back as soon as she's done and then we'll be able to get to the distressing. So I'm back. I've got my second coat of the chalk paint on and I'm ready to do a little bit of distressing. So to do the distressing, um, I'm doing what I call the wet distressing and it's simply taking a damp rag and going along any of those edges that you want to be able to um, sort of uh, sand off but without having to sand. As I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of sanding so anytime I can do some wet distressing, that's kind of the route I'd like to go. So I've got an old rag, it's a little bit damp. And what I'm gonna do is just rub on the edges here and let's just see how much we can get to come off. Now I intentionally did not put a dark, dark paint underneath this so the the um, sort of sanding or the color that's going to come through is not going to be real stark and that's okay with me but you can start to see a little bit of that under color coming through it's going to give this some character a little bit of aging i'm going to go ahead and start on this side and you can see the Chalk paint is starting to collect a little bit on my rag. And if you've never worked with chalk paint before, it's um, a lot like a paint that I remember being on my neighbor's porch. As a kiddo, I would go over to my neighbor's house. They were probably in their 80s, um, a nice Swedish couple, wonderful, just like grandparents to us really. And we would go sit on their front porch and he would like to bounce us on his lap and sing his songs. Um, but they had um, some brick that was covered in a, kind of a concrete top. And that to concrete top was painted in a white paint. And I'm pretty sure it was a, a lead-based paint, but there was a chalky feel to it. When you run your, cross, your hand across it, you would get a white chalky substance. Um, that's a lot like what chalk paint feels like. So I like that and I like the fact that it's just got a flat surface or has a flat look to it. So you can start to see real faintly that darker edge. So I'm just going to continue working this piece. I'm going to do up around his head around his neck. So let me continue to work this piece and I will come back and show you how it turned out. Alrighty, so I've got my horse and I've got him distressed um, pretty close to I think the way that I like it. I may end up doing a little bit more distressing but I went ahead and not only did the edges but I also did some of the areas around the center to actually give a little depth to him. So to show some roundness I kind of did some distressing underneath the horse on both sides to give it the impression of sort of a round underbelly. Um, so there's a lot of lots of little techniques that you can use um, when you're creating something like this to give it a little bit of dimension without having to get out a paintbrush. So I've chosen to do a bleaching technique on the base of my piece. It really just requires some bleach, a toothbrush, some protective equipment, rubber gloves, glasses for sure, and then a surface that is safe to work on with bleach. I've got a mirror here, glass works well. Um, and you're gonna take your toothbrush, dip it into the bleach, and you're just gonna paint the bleach onto your piece. Allow it to dry, ideally overnight, to give the bleach a chance to work. And if you'd like to see it bleach even further, go ahead and do a second coat. You can even do a third coat. Um, but what's really important is once you're done, you want to neutralize the bleach and you do that with a 50-50 mixture of water and vinegar. Paint it all over your piece, allow it to dry, and then go back over it one more time with plain water. So I've got him all set and then I went ahead and pulled out the rocking portion and I'm going to carefully put the dowels back into the horse. I'm going to lay him down here and I'm just going to pound these in just a very little bit. And I'm going to work it in. Okay, I've got it through the feet, both feet on that side and this one. And I'm going to make it, have it rock, rock it back and forth and just see if it's actually placed correctly. I'm going to do, now that I've got the horse on here, I'm going to go back in with a little bit of 
Uh, this is tight bond two glue, wood glue. I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of this and I'm gonna glue the dowels into this piece of the sleigh. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of this glue um, inside where each of the feet are to try and hold those in place as well. And I'm not gonna bore you with the details of it, but let me go ahead and get it glued and then I'll come back to you. So I'm back, I've got them all glued together and I'm just gonna kinda take it easy on them for a little bit and I wanted to show you how I'm gonna, number one, add a little thickness to his neck. If you remember the beginning of the video, I said he's got kind of a scrawny neck. I feel bad for the guy, but I have a couple ideas. First one involves uh, just taking some um, twine and knotting some of these wooden beads along it and taking it and just wrapping it around his neck, her neck. Like that. I can't see it from my size. I'm gonna move around here. So you could do something like that, just something very natural, something kind of simplistic to add a little bit of something to him. And I think um, the the wooden beads give it a sort of a, I don't want to say a little bit of a boho, but the wooden beads are kind of popular right now in the whole boho style. Um, so that's one option. You could take it and do a little wrap like this. I've decided to do something a little bit different. This is another possibility if you wanted to just maybe wrap this around the neck a couple of times and put a bow like that. You could do something like that. I think that would be cute. And again, kind of very natural looking, which is kind of what I'm going for. For me, I have one other idea. I'm kind of thinking springtime, first of all. This is something I'd like to put up and I'd like it to be able to go into spring. I went ahead and took a strand of twine and these wooden beads and I knotted them all together. And I'm actually gonna take it and create a mane I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm going to adhere those beads to the top of his head so it looks like a mane. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. And then I'm going to add a little hint of greenery to it and he's going to be set except for the pedestal that we're going to put him on. So I'm going to go ahead and use E6000. This does not dry quickly, but when it does, it sticks. So I'm going to go ahead and put some on one of the beads. Now what I want to do is kind of place the beads at the bottom first, around the curve of the neck there. And then I'm just going to hold this into place. And let's see, I, I debated just going ahead and using a hot glue gun today just so that you could see it all together because I'm not sure if this is going to stay in place for me right now. But we'll give it a minute and we'll see. I'm just going to adhere some glue to some of the beads. Not all of them. I don't think it's necessary to get all of them. Yeah, it's a little bit messy here, so you might want to do a neater job than what I'm doing right now. And I don't have my glasses on. I don't know how many of you need glasses as well, but I don't see super well without my glasses. So this whole thing might be really interesting when I'm all finished. But let's go ahead and put it back up on top. And then I want to make sure I kind of get the curve at the base of his neck here. Head to the back. And I'm just going to hold it there for a minute. But that gives you an idea. So it adds a little bit of thickness to the neck that has definitely been lacking. Um, it gives it sort of a, maybe a little bit of a trendy, natural style. And then once it dries, I'm actually gonna add a hint of greenery. And I'm not gonna do it all right now, but just to give you an idea. And I, this is um, kind of a faux eucalyptus. It was a gar garland. And I think I'm gonna take it and either drape it around his neck like this, just sort of off to the side, or thin it out a little bit and actually sort of make a ring that can go around his neck. So I'm going to play with it once these beads uh, set into place and they dry. I'll play with that a little bit more and I'll show you. 
Okay, the final step. I told you that I was working on this piece um, that I had gotten from my dad and I had this great idea. Um, I talked about actually filling that um, where the slat came through, filling this, I trimmed it out with the jigsaw, I filled it with wood glue, I sanded it down so I could go ahead and paint it. And I was working on the top piece and I actually broke the top piece. So decided that although this would be beautiful and I can show you how cute it would be, although it would be beautiful to put him on this stand, you can see how cute that is. The stand's not going to work right now because it's not stable enough. It really needs to have a wider base and probably a little wider spot here around the top for the horse to sit on in order for it to be stable and not fall over. So I came up with another idea. And if you're a creator, you do this all the time. I was actually out thrifting with my husband the other day and I came across this big, beautiful candlestick. And... Look how perfect this candlestick is to hold this. Isn't that beautiful? I love, 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 love it. And with a little bit of the eucalyptus maybe wrapped around it. Oh, it's just gonna be absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna take a little more time. I'm gonna get these beads adhered. I'm gonna get some eucalyptus wrapped around his head and I'm gonna take some E6000 and I'm actually gonna adhere him to the top of that candlestick. And I want you to stay tuned so you can see the finished project. So here she is. This is our finished project for today. I've just taken a thrift store find and I didn't completely remake it. And I think that's important to know. You don't always have to completely remake it. I just freshened it up, gave it a fresh coat of paint so it was a little bit whiter and a little bit brighter. I lightened uh, the dark oak wood a little bit so it's a little more, mm, I wanna say a little more modern. It's still sort of that granny chic, but I love this color. Um, the bleaching did a great job. I added a couple of elements to it that were a little bit trendy right now and I think it turned out beautifully. So that wraps up our project for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you find that it's as much of a success as I do. I think we've taken a piece that was a little bit time-worn, um, had some color issues, maybe even some shape issues. And with a fresh coat of paint, white, white fresh coat of paint that's got a little bit of a creamy base to it, um, some bleaching of the walnut stained wood, and then the addition of this little element for the horse's mane. I think that gave it a better profile than what it had before. And I gotta say, it wasn't what I had in mind to begin with, but this candlestick as a pedestal, ah, I just love it. It elevates it, lifts it up off of a table, off of a mantle, um, off of a dresser. I think it just gives it beautiful style. So let me know what you think. You know, sometimes we have ideas and they don't always work out the way that we hoped, but if we're persistent, Oftentimes we can come up with even something better than we first had in mind. So I'm Heidi Hood with the H2 Home Designs. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. If you like this video, please share. Um, love to have others join us in this conversation and take a little time to go out and create. Uh, use your imagination, if you will. I remember as my kids were younger, one of them came running into the room and said, Mommy, Sissy's not letting me use my imagination. And I think, how funny it was but how tragic when we don't use our imaginations so just imagine a little bit dream a little bit um, come up with ideas and just be flexible if um, your ideas don't necessarily pan out it's okay because sometimes what you end up with is even all the more beautiful so thank you so much for joining me and as I always say if it's up to you be the reason that someone smiles today thank you so much and take care